Made in Abyss is a manga and anime truly made in abyss, as it is an odd mixture of beautiful animation backgrounds and soundtrack with truly horrific and brutal events, usually involving innocent children. It's disturbing to the extent that I don't think I would recommend it for anyone to watch. However, if you have seen it already, let's try to make some sense of the tricky symbolism of something that I would argue is a heroine's journey, a mirror of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. We start with a rather subversive premise. A city built around an abyss, a hall full of deadly monsters, but also fantastic treasures and artifacts of great value to the community. This void that normally constitutes the outskirts of the map is the very center of the city's life. Our protagonist, Rico, is a girl who was still born in the abyss and then revived with the power of an artifact, which left a side effect of an overwhelming drive for the bottom of the abyss in Rico. So we have everything right here at the beginning, chaos, femininity, death, and the gift of life. When Rico's 12, she gets an invitation from her supposedly deceased mother to join her at the bottom of the abyss, from where no one can return. On the one hand, we can see it as a play on rescuing your father from the belly of the whale, because she's supposed to go there and not come back. But on the other, since Rico actually comes from the abyss, the top is her down and now she is on the return trip. The idea that this is the feminine coming of age story is further supported by the fact that the manga's characters are drawn as if it was a story for children, their proportions, behavior and mimicry are plainly childlike, but they experience extremely adult events, together with slight hints at discovering sexuality. At one point, Rico even bleeds from every hole in her body. She experiences a level of oppression from the curse of the abyss, a form of fatigue or a body damaging force, which works on people moving up from the abyss. We could call it a rigid hierarchy, as it gets stronger the lower one gets, and it is also more dense in the middle of the hall and much weaker at the outskirts. Another symbol of the masculine oppressive force of a dead, uncrowned hierarchy, devouring every new life for its needs and convenience, is the character of Bondred, who lurks deep deep in the depths of the abyss. He uses children's internal organs to direct the curse from himself to them, which allows him to travel upwards without harm. Needless to say, the children are killed in the process of organ extraction. Reminiscences of Moloch, or the concept of abortion, immediately come to mind. Also, Bondred is called the Lord of Dawn, or the Sovereign of Dawn, which sounds rather familiar in the realm of biblical figures. The anime ends here for now, but the manga continues into the sixth layer of the abyss, where things are even more chaotic and harder to understand, where monsters become even stranger, and even people tend to lose their human form. We know that the more rigid a hierarchy is, the stronger its plunge into chaos can be, as the pendulum swings. It actually works both ways. The deeper the chaos, the more soulless the hierarchies are going to be. In the sixth layer of the abyss, our heroine finds a village with some extremely harsh rules regarding transaction of goods. This includes paying with one's body parts. The village has its origins in an event of devouring the disfigured offspring of one woman, and its leaders were the perpetrators. I'd say it illustrates the fear of the feminine element for her children, her life, to be used as a building block for something rigid and dead. The manga is still going on, so we do not have the full picture of this journey yet. Who knows what Rico will find even deeper in the abyss. This interpretation was done with the help of a fellow Symbolic World fan, Maciej Johankowski, and I'd like to thank him for his insights and help with this difficult material. I had to skip most of the things we talked about for the sake of brevity. What do you think of it? Does it make sense? Please share your thoughts in the comments. I apologize for scarce visual aids in this episode, but the copyright owner of Made in the Abyss is especially rigid about it. Thank you for your time and attention.